am Michelle Livingston, and my dear, thank you for coming on Zoom. This is going to be great from here on out uh, when people can't, you know, come over to the office. But you know that I do like to bless readings by, by acknowledging that they are the good side. They are the love and the light. And uh, I believe in prayer, honey. So I will be saying a prayer for you. And I'm going to uh, also ask that what you need to hear comes through from the okay. realm of the spirit world. My angel helpers, you know them as the light beings, and they never let us down. <laughs> they're going to come in here after the prayer, and they're going to form a triangle of protection. And there is no distance with spirit. So it's just like you're right in front of me, just like at the office. I do have someone behind you, and it's either an ex-boyfriend or an ex-husband. Uh, behind, as you know, are in-laws or friends or ex-spouses or boyfriends. So there's a guy wearing jeans behind you. He calls you Lease, and he went out pretty quickly, honey. So what did your son, you have a son, right? Mm -hmm. Did his dad, biological, go out fairly quick out of this earth plane? He did. Yes, yes. That's I'm a confirmation. Sorry. That was my phone. That's a confirmation. So I do have to say, sweetheart, he steps in, he says, Lise, I wish we could have made it. But we produced a fine kid. That's how he talks like this. Uh, I don't know if he drank your son's father, but he's shaking kind of like a liquor bottle. And he may have been on something, honey, some kind of substance. I don't know. Uh, do you know anything about that, Lisa? That he would yes. have, did, he, did yes. he drink or what? Substance. Substance abuse, kind of? Yes. Yeah. And I don't think he intentionally meant to leave the earth plane. I think that, uh, I don't know if it was an overdose or an accident, but he, he, he had a little bit of time left on earth, but he said he was foolish. That's what he tells me. Tell Lisa I was foolish with my actions. And um, he's around your son a lot. He is trying to, and you can hear me okay, fine, honey? Mm -hmm. He's trying to help him not veer into any kind of temptation, um, like any kind of substance now. And how old would he be now, your son? He just turned 18. Yeah. See, he's coming up on drinking age. And even in driving, Lisa, in the car, his dad is protecting him from doing anything too foolish. Now, I think it's your mother. I think this is your mother coming in. Um, oh, my God, does she love you, sweetheart. She comes over and strokes your uh, cheek, Lisa. And she's running her fingers through your hair. And thanking you again, here we go, from the bottom of her heart. You were there for her, weren't you? Yes. And she wants to take your hand and squeeze your hand. And she says you're the best daughter I could ever have. And she sends love to her granddaughter, which is your daughter. So I don't know if they were close or not, but she watches over that daughter of yours, which is her granddaughter. Aww. And I want to ask you something. This is funny. Do these kids have different dads or not? These children. My kids? Yes. Because each one is slightly different, like, you know, their personality, the way they look. <laughs> the oldest two were to my ex-husband. And the youngest one is to what you're calling my husband. Yeah. But my common-law husband. Right. So, so the, the daughter, she was to the ex-husband, right? Yes. And are you a grandma yet? Yes. Because your mother has had souls with her, and she's met up with them, and somebody lost a, a child through miscarriage or termination of a pregnancy. So the ones that have lost children, I don't know if your daughter did, you did, terminated, I don't know, your mom did, but she's met up with the souls of these children and grandchildren that were lost, darling, okay? Okay. So you might have known somebody that miscarried or terminated, Lisa. We both did. Okay. Which, was it miss or termination? Both. Wow. For me, both. Yeah. Her, the termination. Okay. One of yours was a boy. I just want to tell you that. I think that might have been the termination. She's met up with him. Uh, the other one was a girl, I think, that you miscarried. I'm just telling you. The timing was not right. So whether it was with the ex-husband or be in between, I don't know. But uh, she's met up with all of these children. She calls them the children. Your mother, how is her eyesight? 
She wants not, to put glasses on and off on. Not good. And I'm going to say, Lisa, she had difficulty in seeing. I don't know if this was cataracts or just uh, glaucoma. There was something wrong with her eyes at the end. She cataracts. Couldn't see, she couldn't see well. And she tells me, but she could see the love that you had for her. Mm. And she has her hair short and it's kind of fixed, you know, to talk. And she may have fell at some point. Hopefully you haven't fallen. But she shows me ice and steps, like icy steps. So I don't know if you've fallen, honey, or she fell. Oh, we both have. <laughs> really? Like on the ice in the winter or something like that? She fell on the ice one winter and broke her tailbone. That was a couple, several years ago. I recently fell in a hallway and fractured my shoulder. Oh, my God. Uh, there were angels trying to prop you up because what they're saying, Lisa, is it could have been a lot worse. Oh, you, I know. <laughs> you could have really fallen and even broken a hip the way you landed. So mama will always prop you up. She's joking, no more falls. She is your friend, she tells me, as well as your mother. And I feel very close with you and her. And I, I oh, she wants to come in a dream. Have you dreamt of your mom yet? Mm-hmm. And you know, the, you know that when you dream of them, your soul's up out of your body and you're in the higher frequency of the astral world. Your mother wraps her arms around you. She wants to rock you like a baby girl. She wants to rock you like you're her little girl. She was not in pain when she took her last breath. So you need to hear this because you've thought, oh my God, you know, I don't want my mom to be in pain. And she says, tell Lisa, I wasn't in pain. She saw a light. I need to tell you this. This is so cool. It was like pale blue light. And she heard her name being called. And she said she, her soul rose above and she wanted you to be there at the end. Were you there at the end? Almost. An I, I had just left and she went. It's an, it, it's kind of an issue in your mind or she wouldn't. She be was, there. she was cold. Yeah. When we were there. Right. And we covered her up and it didn't, it didn't click. And she was in a hospice and we covered her up and made her comfortable. And we said, okay, we'll be back in the morning. Cause we had gone and decorated her room with all of her favorite things. And um, we left and I said, I feel like I shouldn't leave. And I feel like I'm never gonna see her again. And my sister said, go back and give her another kiss. So I went back and I held her hand and I leaned down and I gave her another kiss. And I said, I love you and I'll see you in the morning. And we left and right after that she passed. Uh-huh. Because I think in your mind, you're thinking if I just would have stayed, if I would have gotten there and it's an issue. So your mom wants to say, I wish you would have been there, but release anything, release the guilt of it. She said, I went very peacefully, not in pain. And in fact, all I feel is a little bit of pressure here. And I do this and my soul rises above and she looked down. I think the hospice worker was there. It seems mm -hmm. there was somebody else there because she said when she rose above and looked down, she saw herself and she says, I, I looked in pretty bad shape. That's what your mom says. She had a good sense of humor. So when she <laughs> rose above her body, she said, oh, I looked in pretty bad shape, but I was ready. And she needs to tell you, sweetheart, she was ready. But did they have a family reunion for her? She got up there to the light. Bill was there. These other siblings came and said, welcome home. And they wrapped their arms around her. And, um, and she met up with the souls that you lost, both hers and yours. Oh, for heaven's sakes, is anybody capable of any children over and above the 18-year-old that you have to be a grandmother again? Because your mother has a little girl in a pink blanket over here. Uh, my daughter's 32. I mean, it's possible. And she's capable. She didn't get her tubes done, and right? She's capable. I'm telling you something. You go, there's going to be a little grandbaby girl born. Your mother says this one was lost, but now she's found. She's rocking it. And she, it's a pink blanket. She wants to hand it down into family. And it's a big surprise. You're going to be a grandma again. <laughs> it's a little girl. 
That's it's good. All girl. <laughs> and August is mentioned too. So if August is nobody's birthday or crossing month, then the child may be conceived or born this August or next August, honey. You said that last time. What? Said what? That, sh that you saw a baby from her in August. No. Yes. No. Yes. Holy heck. I can't, thanks for that confirmation, because I don't remember anything I said. I'm telling her to put garlic around her neck. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, well, then that's a reconfirmation for you. Another princess in the family. Yeah, Yay. with little pink, little pink outfits and everything. I see it. And your mother has a request this time, sweetheart. If, when the new little baby girl granddaughter is born, if you could take your mom's first name and use it as the baby's middle name. I don't know if your daughter would be willing to do that. Oh my God. But her daughter, her daughter that she has now, she was going to name after my mom. And the father who is no longer in the picture got her to change her mind and name her something else, which is a nice name, but she didn't get my mom's name. My mom's name is Priscilla. Yep. So it's a very unique, it is, lovely name. Yes. And it does. And she was going to do it, so I bet you she will. Well, yeah, and it can be a middle name. Your mom gives permission, but she says, please, this time around, would you use my name, even if it's for a middle name? Wow. So she knows about it, see? And, um, oh, she looks great. She, do she doesn't look tired. She doesn't look old. Your mother has a radiance about her, honey. And she said, she doesn't want to show partiality, but you're one of her favorite daughters. <laughs> Here we go. Don't want to get in the middle. I was the baby. Loves you.